for me, when I'm out there in the grips of addiction, I am I'm hopeless, helpless, I'm just, I'm useless, <laughs> you know, and it's horrible, it's horrible, that's why I had such a hard time, because everything I was doing was going against all my morals, values, you know, everything, everything that was important to me went out the window because of the drugs. I grew up in East Patchogue and then moved out to Southern Arizona for about 20 years. I was doing really bad, really bad. Um, I, I had come out to take care of my parents. I, I was living out in Vegas at the time in Henderson. I, I've been out, I, I've been in prison. I was out in prison for, for 10 years out there, you know, on and off, a couple different trips. And I, I, I made a surprise trip when I called up my parents and told them, hey, uh, can you come pick me up? They're like, where are you? I said, MacArthur Airport. And, oh my God, you know. When I come back from, from out west, I, I was a wildland firefighter while I was out there. That was what I did. And, uh, you know, I came back here because my parents, they needed help, you know, so I, I stepped in to be a caretaker for them. And uh, when I came back here, at first I didn't do anything. I, I, I would go to the bar on the corner, have a couple of beers, but then I ran into a high school friend and he did coke. And I started doing coke with him and then started doing crack. And then started, uh, I went right back to, to shooting cocaine. And um, as a result, they threw me out. I said, you know what? This is getting a little crazy with the drug use. I'll go into treatment. We went to a halfway house, a Seafield halfway house, stayed there for a month. And my parents were like, we need you back home. You're doing okay? And I said, yeah, you, you know, I'm hitting my meetings, doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. This is when COVID was just starting to come into play. And I moved back home and, uh, you know, I, I did well for, I believe it was about four months. This is the summer of 2020. Uh, I went in for laparoscopic surgery and you know, they put you under anesthesia and then they give you, you know, because I was in pain when I came out and I wasn't thinking and they, they hit me with Demerol, you know, and um, wow, you know, it's, woo, boy, you know, so I ended up going right back out into drug use when I left, left there and it was a rocky road. My parents were extremely PO. Now we're getting into like, I want to say September. Yeah, it was the end of September 2020, and uh, they said, you have to do something, otherwise you, you, you can't live here. So I ended up going to this place called Phelps, this Phelps Institute, uh, 21 days there, and it felt really, really good. You know, I was doing really, really well. I got out of there, went back home, and the end of, this is January of last year, that's when we got COVID. The whole, my, myself, my mother, my father, and um, that's when COVID was at its worst. We, uh, I was going to meetings online, you know, doing the Zoom meetings. And um, I mean, they were, they were okay, you know, it was a meeting, but you know, I was just it, without the human contact and you know, people couldn't, the meetings I was going to, they weren't the people that I knew from the AA meetings locally that I was going to uh, as a result. I had too much time on my hands. I ended up going out again, started using. My parents said, no way, we can't have you in the house like this. You know, they were worried about their, you know, to, to mainly their mental health, because, you know, they worry, they're, they're parents, they loving parents. But um, I ended up living in my car, <laughs> and I was doing whatever I had to do to, to, to use drugs, you know, to get the drugs, to use the drugs up to like September last year, it got real bad with the heroin because they're cutting a lot of, they're cutting everything with, with fentanyl. They're putting it in marijuana, they're putting it in heroin, they're putting it in, in cocaine, they're even putting it in crack cocaine. The normal dose of what I would normally take, um, I ended up getting Narcan five times in, in two months time. Uh, 
you know, one of the times it was, I was, uh, I had a girlfriend at the time and we were, but we were lucky to get a motel room. We managed to, you know, get money together and we got a motel room. And I remember Pat, I remember, you, cause I was intravenous using and all I remember is doing a shot. And as I'm coming, coming aware or coming to, I heard, no, 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 no. And I was getting hit on the chest and it, it was her trying to do CPR, you know, and she was trying to resuscitate me and all that. And I woke up, I was, you know, when I came out of it, I was bewildered. And the messed up thing about it was the first words out of my mouth are, <laughs> were, you better not have smoked all, all the crack, you know? Uh, it wasn't, thank you for saving my life. It was, you know, uh, you, better, you better have saved me some drugs. I don't know how long I was out or whatever. But that happened four other times. Another time I was over a, fr <clears throat> a friend's house. It was a little amount. I did, I did a shot and I told him, I said, man, I said, uh, I'm not feeling that great. I'll tell you right now, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to sit down. And I guess before I had a chance to sit down, I, I, I passed out and I hit the floor. I was laying on the floor when I came to and I was soaking wet. You had thrown a, a pitcher of ice water in my face, had Narcan me. I saw the empty Narcan inhalers, you know, by the grace of God, Narcan gave me five more tries at life, you know. Everything just came to a head. I, 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 I was off my medications, so I was basically, I was suicidal and I was so disgusted with myself and what I was doing. I had to do something and her and I, my girlfriend, she, she was actually mandated to go to treatment. So I said, we'll go at the same time. By the grace of God, I found a 28 day program and uh, we were going over options. I said, I don't think it's safe I go to my area, you know, where I was running around, because uh, people, places, and things, it's a, it's a huge thing. So he said, uh, he said, what about Staten Island? And I go, I've never been there. I passed by it, been through it. I have no connections, you know, it's kind of like a, a geographical cure. But damn, now that I'm clean and sober, I want to move forward. You know, because for me, when I'm out there in the grips of addiction, I am. I'm hopeless, helpless, I'm just, I'm useless, <laughs> you know, and it's horrible, it's horrible. That's why I had such a hard time because everything I was doing was going against all my morals, values, you know, everything, everything that was important to me went out the window because of the drugs.